Hey everybody, it's your old pal Mike. I hope you're happy, healthy, and safe, and welcome back to the channel, because this week we are going to be continuing on the long-suffering task of restoring and refitting that 61 Jazzmaster that has been on the channel over the last few weeks. Quick recap of where we are right now. In the first episode, we discussed the job. We had a thorough once-over with the guitar, tore it down to its base components, and talked about the game plan. In episode two, we focused on corrosion, which is a big problem on this guitar for both the brass body inserts and some of the, you know, functional components were also suffering. So we took care of that as well. In this, the third episode, we are going to be tackling the electronics woes, which includes things like bad solder joints. It includes replaced parts. It includes cleaning and lubricating some of the original components that still remain just to ensure that they continue to work their best for years to come. But the first thing I need to do is I need to remove every component from the guard and replace the shield plate. If you recall from the very first episode, I commented that this shielding plate is in bad shape overall. It almost looks like a beer or a soda or something had been spilled on the guitar and never quite cleaned up. You can see the deterioration that's going on in the guard and it is, I mean, this is malleable, it breaks, it's chipping away. And eventually that's going to spell doom for the electronic components. It may take a while, but I would feel a lot better simply replacing that plate though it is vintage, for something brand new, like this spare shield that I have from a custom shop Jazzmaster that I worked on last year. This plate is going to work perfectly for our needs, both in terms of shielding and for securing the ground connection between components. Because I don't know if you know this, but the ground connection on vintage Jazzmasters is made primarily via the aluminum shielding plate. There aren't wires running between each pot and jack and switch. It's all done via this plate, and that's a fine way of doing it. You know, sometimes I double up if I'm not sure about the connectivity of a piece of shielding on the back of a guard, but this will work just fine. And also, it's not corroded to hell, so I think this is going to be a vast improvement over the original part, which, again, as I've said before, sometimes on vintage guitars you just need to replace something. Things break, things go bad, that happens. Doing so is not the end of the world, and if I'm honest, I'd much rather have a reliable guitar than one that is perfectly original faults and all. So we're going to replace that shielding plate first, and we may have to make some adjustments to the shape or the placement of the controls. That's no big deal. Now, I've already gone to the trouble of removing all of the screws and the nuts holding the components in, so I'm just going to gently pry them off. <laughs> yeah, no big deal. You can see someone put some copper foil on this not sure for what reason, maybe because the parts weren't being secured properly. That sometimes happens. And yeah, this is, this is disgusting. I'm so glad we're replacing this. That's sad, but it's good that we're doing this. So let's get rid of that guy and test fit the new one. Overall, that's pretty good. Wow. We are gonna have little bit of a fit issue with the input jack, possibly. Tone knob is a little bit off, so I'll adjust that. I may remove some thimble material. Screw locations are a little bit off on the upper part of the guard, and also this area right here is going to stick out from the perimeter of the guard, so I'm going to get a marker. I've got markers for this specific purpose. Where's my bloody marker? Oh, it's been right here the whole time. Let's make some mischief together. I'm just going to mark the material that I would like to remove. I don't think I'll go quite that far in there. Make sure this isn't sticking out. Maybe a little bit of material there. I'm going to mark this side of the hole this side, anything that might be an obstruction. The perimeter of it, I think I can do on the belt sander fairly safely. I'm gonna get rid of this. This is <laughs> hanging over. Screw locations. Right there, right there, right there, right there. Jeez, all of these. This may lay differently, but I don't want to risk 
the chance of bunching up under this new Spitfire guard. You see, vintage jazz masters have this issue where the original celluloid pick guards will shrink as they age, basically pulling everything in toward the center of the guitar like a singularity. This can lead to issues like warping or bunching or even components no longer fitting in their holes in the guard, and it can eventually rip the screws in the body out of their locations, meaning that a repair will be needed. And while the pickguard certainly gets most of the blame, the aluminum shield, well, that's part of the problem as well, because while the pickguard is shrinking, do you know what doesn't shrink over time? Aluminum. These aluminum shields stay the same shape that they always were, and so, do you know what happens when the pickguard begins to shrink? Well, this thing bunches up and causes even more issues. You can actually see that on Pancake itself, right around the toggle switch location, which is rising up off the body, and that is because the shield is doing that underneath the pick guard. So far, I've been super lucky on Pancake. I don't have to worry about it very much. And shrinkage will not be an issue on this Jazzmaster because this is a spit fire guard. Spitfire is a great company that makes great vintage correct guards. Can't recommend them enough. And so this material is probably not going to have that problem. So we're gonna be okay, just as long as we fit the shield to the guard. And let's check our fit. How are we looking? Now I just need all of my holes to be relatively well lined up. I don't need them to fit perfectly. I don't need a tight hole around each screw. I just need enough space for wiggle room. Yeah, I think I'm gonna continue on. Those should be good. Oh, that one's. Some of these are still so off. I don't know. Yeah, let's do these three holes and I think we'll be okay. Mm hmm. That is a lot better. I think this one is still a little bit off. A much better fit overall. We'll just have to see once we install all of the components. I think I think everything is looking okay. Some of these are just a little bit tight. This one might be a little tight, but also there's foil over that that I'm gonna have to remove. This one's a little tight still. Well, I think that will do it. So the last thing we're gonna do is remove this foil, this awful foil from the back of the guard, because you've heard me rant about this before, that shielding is worthless if it's not comprehensive. It's not covering every surface. So if you see this on the back of a pick guard, just rip it off and put your own foil on top that covers every surface or you know, just get a shielding plate. Any of that will do. Just don't, just don't settle for this. There's no point to even putting this on there. Just gonna use my razor blade to encourage it to lift. All I've got right now is polished, so I'm just gonna wipe down the back of the guard. 
get all the debris off. Yeah, that should do nicely. There's still a little bit of adhesive. Oh yeah, I'm removing the fake aging <laughs> as well. Uh, I'm not really a fan of the aging on this particular guard. I have to admit, it's a little bit silly given the condition of the rest of the guitar being a refin. Doesn't quite match. It's not. I could get some goo going on that. It's not up to me. But if I had my druthers, yeah, I'd probably uh, remove some of this, whatever this is, coffee, I'm assuming. Remove a little bit of that. Because the color of a good mint pick guard, it's not quite green, it's not quite white, it's, it's bluish green and very subtle. I love that, and I think that's going to match beautifully with that color, but uh, we're just going to leave this as is. Okay, now we are on to the electronics, and before we start soldering, I'm going to take a minute to clean off some parts that I missed last time around. Parts that were connected directly to electronics that I wasn't able to get to, such as the thumb wheels for the rhythm circuit, and also the rhythm circuit bracket. That thing is looking nasty, so I'm going to remove all of these components. Oh, look at the masking tape protecting bare metal. I'm gonna remove these components and clean them off. And then while I'm at that, I'm also going to clean and lubricate the switch, the pots, the toggle switch, anything that rotates and governs a parameter of what you're getting out of the guitar. So let's start with that. I'll have to search for the right Allen key. I should have done some pre-pro. Oh, hey, all right, I guessed correctly. And they are sort of corroded. Ugh, wow. Yeah, these guys are stuck. I wonder if it'll help to knock them. There we go. That helped. Oh, yeah. That is, that is nasty. So what I am going to do... Wow, none of this wants to turn. There we go. A little bit of elbow grease. Or wrist grease. Oh yeah, that one came off a lot easier. So we are going to free them from their bracket. Ah, the wonderful. Rhythm circuit is a thing of beauty. I love it so much. So yeah, let's Use the same process that we use on the hardware and the brass shielding tubs. We're gonna put some vinegar in a cup and let them soak for a little while. Then use a toothbrush or maybe even a wire brush to scrape off the corrosion. And for these little guys, I'm also gonna soak them in vinegar, but not for too long. I just wanna make whatever this white stuff is, probably also corrosion. I just wanna encourage that stuff to come off. So yeah, we're gonna soak those too. Anybody else need a vinegar bath? don't think so. I think everything else is A-OK. -okay. I'm going to use up the last of the white vinegar I have from California before we moved. That's right, for some reason I brought this cross-country. Oh. And just make sure it's covered. You can see this on camera. Vinny got a hold of this little cup and uh, made a toy out of it. <laughs> so I'm going to let this sit for maybe about half an hour for the thumb wheels and then the bracket. I'm gonna give that at least two hours to really dissolve what's going on there, but uh, yeah, we're gonna set this aside and check in on it in a bit. This process, for someone who is not a big fan of vinegar for taste or smell, well, yeah, it's not my favorite. All right, we're gonna set the pick guard aside and focus on spraying out these electronics. Now I've got some CRC QD cleaner. This is the stuff that I use on just about every electronic component in my life, no matter what it's in. Uh, but if you've got a scratchy pot, this is the first thing you should do. Let's show you how to use it. Eh, some of these solder joints, man. <laughs> yeah. Just spray inside the pot and you can feel it loosen up as you turn. When you spray a pot out, it helps to turn it throughout its entire rotation anywhere from 10 to 30 times, just to really work the stuff in. That will ensure a nice, clean wiper inside. The wiper is the thing in the pot. 
that makes it go down or up. You can hear that one turning. Let's spray it out a little bit. Oh yeah, you can feel them loosen up. You can feel them cleaning themselves off. Really, really, really good stuff. Oh, I don't know if you're seeing this. There's a little bit of tape around the shaft of the pot and there's foil on this one. And it's not just because they are undersized for the pots, it's actually because original Jazzmaster knobs were placed on solid shaft pots. I know that sounds crazy, but yeah, Fender was just popping smooth knobs on smooth shafts and uh, they work. I've actually uh, done that specifically on R2 to replicate what I had going on in Pancake. You'd be surprised, they, just, they stay put. There's no problem with it, it just works. So, we got the stuff off. Might have to build a little brass sheath to go around this, but I didn't want to stick with the foil. That's not a really secure way to attach a knob to a pot. So yeah, those feel a little bit better. I am going to lubricate them. But first, let's do the same to the rhythm circuit controls. Yeah. Oh. God, that feels so much better already. It's a little easier to do this with the uh, thumb wheels attached, but they're soaking, so I'm just gonna turn them by hand. All right, and do the same to the switch. Feels better already. There's not a whole lot to clean on these, but it never hurts. Oh, I guess I'll spray the jack. There's a little detritus on the jack. I wonder if that'll wipe off. No, whatever that is, it's baked on. Cool. Well, that's okay. So we've got the harness cleaned. Now we're going to lubricate it. It's multi-purpose precision lubricant. Plastic safe, improves electrical properties, and that's what we want. Now this stuff, you do not have to spray a whole lot of it. And in fact, if you're going to spray any at all, it helps to have a paper towel on hand because this just runs. It's uh, it's thin, it's runny, gets everywhere. So we are going to start with the rhythm circuit controls. And I'm just going to, yeah, just a little, little squeeze. That makes such a huge difference. This stuff is incredible. And if you've got scratchy pots or pots that are a little bit tough to turn, this might be the thing for you. I can feel that one grinding a little bit. Maybe this will help. Ah, yep, loosened up immediately. Yeah, just a little bit of extra work can have a big payoff when it comes to vintage parts. And of course, these parts, as we discovered in the first episode, they are not vintage. These are from 2016, did I say? 2016? Yeah, 2016. So they probably don't really need lubrication. They're not the nicest pots, and I would normally just replace these. Uh, however, I just don't have any at the moment. Uh, all of my usual places are out of stock of one meg, so I will try to salvage these, and if, if not, well, then we'll just find somewhere that has them. I'm going to lubricate the switch. Just a little, just a little. You don't want the rhythm circuit switch to be super easy to engage, you know, given the way that some people strum <laughs> acrobatically, uh, but a little bit can help just to keep things running smoothly. Oh, wow, that got cleaned up really nicely. It's rubbing the casing a little bit. All right, same with the toggle switch. I don't think I'm gonna lubricate that because I want it to feel clicky or substantial when you move it around. I don't want it to easily engage or disengage. Everything seems like it's working fine on that. We're just gonna leave that as is. Now I'm gonna check in on my other parts and see how they're doing in the vinegar bath and uh, then we'll come back and clean them off. Two very boring minutes later. 
All right, I'm back from the vinegar bath, and I have to say, the bracket came out beautifully with only about an hour in the vinegar. It took absolutely no effort to get rid of all of that rust and grime and corrosion. This thing came out great, and I feel really good about reattaching it to the new shield. I don't think this is going to uh, be a problem. As for the thumb wheels, once I bathed them in vinegar and scraped away whatever it was that was on there, I'm not really sure, it could be paint, could be like white out even. Uh, it was just bare metal underneath. And so I took it upon myself to grab some black enamel spray paint and just recoat the knurled thumb wheel surface in black just so that it looked a lot nicer. So yeah, these are gonna work out great. Now all that's left is to reattach the components to the guard and the shield and to repopulate the rhythm circuit bracket. So first thing I'm gonna do is put these lock washers back on the RC pots. And we're just gonna push them back through. There we go. Yep, that looks a lot better. And reattach the thumb wheels. I've got the screws right here, so I'm gonna go ahead and thread that in by hand. There we go. Slides right in. Where's that Allen key? Just to get that in there. May as well do the other one while I'm here. That little grub screw in its place. One important thing to note is that the grub screw faces out at 10 on the rhythm circuit, so it's important we make sure the knobs are in place. Though I won't fully tighten them down until it's attached, just to make that a little bit easier on me. When you're installing a rhythm circuit, you're always gonna have to fiddle around a little bit with the fit laterally speaking, because the bracket is gonna sit in one position and the wheels are sometimes gonna be a little bit difficult to get perfectly centered in the guard. So I'm gonna screw that down now. This one stripped out screw, <laughs> that's original. That catches quite nicely. That's actually pretty good. Oh God, that one's really bad. Wish I had a good replacement for these. Ah, but I am able to tighten that one down really nicely. So now that we've got the rhythm circuit secured, I'm gonna take this opportunity to loosen it just a little bit and reevaluate my shield positioning. Yeah. So I'm gonna make sure that everything is lined up there. And since I started with the rhythm circuit, that's gonna be the first thing for positioning. Yeah. We're gonna leave that loose and move over to the lead circuit components. I've got these two lock washers here and reattach the volume and tone pots. I'm only gonna tighten them down by hand so that I can adjust the shield and ensure a proper fit. But so far, this is going really well. These wires. I'm gonna redo all these solder joints anyway. It doesn't really matter what the wires look like at the moment. How's that doing? Yeah, I'll use a lock washer. Attach that to the guard by hand. And all that's left is the toggle switch and the rhythm circuit switch. So the RC switch is just two screws, no big deal. So far, I am extraordinarily happy with the shield fit. I think that's going to do the trick. And not with a whole lot of adjustment either. So far, what I am happy with are these screw positions. I think I can tighten everything down now because this guard is perfect. Let's go for it. Let's lock in all of the parts so that the shield stays put. Yeah, that's gonna work. Yep. Mm-hmm. 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 Jazzmaster switches always feel a little bit more comfortable when they move 
a little bit on a diagonal because the guitar, if you think about it, the guitar hangs like this on a strap, so this actually feels pretty good. So yeah, I'm gonna tighten it down as it is and readjust later if I feel like it's a little hard to change. So yeah, there we go. We've got a perfectly fit guard. I'm really happy with this shield. Well done, me. <laughs> All right, but we're not done yet. The next thing I wanna do is refresh these solder joints and definitely replace a few wires that I think are just a little bit too tight between connections. That's not a big deal, just something that has to be done. So let's get that soldering iron heating up. Let's get my iron tinned up while I remove some very old masking tape. Yep. Old ass masking tape. It's okay to get rid of it. A lot of cases, it's the best thing you can do. Especially when you're going to reroute some connections. So, I've got what looks like some cold solder joints on the toggle. I've got, oh no. Whoops, I flipped the uh, volume and tone controls. Let's fix that really quick. <laughs> so I wasn't paying attention because I'm trying to talk to you the whole time. I'm not even looking at what I'm doing. Glad I caught that before it was too late. Wasn't even thinking about it. That's why those connections are super tight. Still gonna redo them though. All right, that's a lot better. <laughs> okay, so what I need to do is I see some cold solder joints on the toggle switch. I'm definitely gonna reflow every connection in the rhythm circuit. And I'll also I'll try and get rid of this sloppy solder here, or at least update it so that it looks a lot nicer. I'm going to reroute all of these connections, make sure that they are getting where they're going without being super tight. And again, this is uh, maybe overkill, like, you know, polishing out the brass shielding tubs, but it's just going to make me feel a lot better about what I'm giving back to Kyle. So let's dig in. Starting with this obnoxiously cold joint on the toggle switch. That is gross. Let's spray that, because that is very dirty indeed. Quite a bit of corrosion on that guy, so you know what? I'm gonna take that off and do a little bit of sanding. Oh, this is wrapped. <laughs> God. Red is rhythm. Remember that, folks. All right, let's free you from the guard. Let's see if that takes solder now. Yep. Our friend here is ready to accept solder. So a little bit of sanding did the trick. All right, I've got solder on the original toggle switch ground connection, which is a little bit problematic, but all it took was a little extra work. No big deal. I don't really need this ground connection because of the aluminum shield, It's but it's already here, so I may as well use it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that looks a lot better. So I'm just going to run this in such a way that it moves a little bit more cleanly to the volume pot. So you don't need quite that much slack. And we're going to clean this up anyway with a little bit of soldering braid. Just going to use a little bit of copper braid to soak up the excess solder. Work. I'll make this look nice later. Perfect little connection. Right, slide that cloth 
cover back up and we should be golden. That's all I need. And we're just going to resolder every single connection. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that should work. And lastly, since we're coming up here anyway, geez, some of this is just old and bad. Yep, that'll do. Yep. That will do nicely. Like I said, we'll make it pretty later. This one, this is all gross. I think I'm just going to replace. Mm hmm. It's good enough for the moment. All of my spare wire, my spare old wire, is packed up still. I'm not quite sure what I did with it, so. We'll certainly find that at some point down the road. And this is my preferred kind of wire anyway. Single conductor, cloth covered, gavit stuff. 22 gauge, I believe. Yeah. And this is my new wire. That will go right here. Pull back the cloth and insert some lovely new solder onto there. Yep, that's all we need. Kink, kink, and kink. Kink, 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 and kink, kink. No kink shaming. No kink shaming on the promenade. That is a little longer than it needs to be. I'm just going to leave it alone for the moment. But that should be most of our connections. Let's reflow the solder on the tone pot while we're here. Reflowing solder joints is always a good idea when you are working on a vintage guitar. I know that people want to see original solder joints, but this stuff goes bad just like anything else. And I think that takes care of everything on the lead circuit. Yep. There's the rhythm circuit tone. Mm-hmm. Rhythm circuit volume. Reflow this ground connection to the tone control real quick. Or to the volume control, rather. There we go. Let's say that's nicely secured, and finally. Yeah, just refresh them until they look nice and new. Mm-hmm. 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 Good. 
of some of the excess on that terminal. That's from the bridge pickup, which we will be working on in a moment. And so far, so good. I think we're going to take a moment and put some tape around some wires. Just to hold them in place. A nice little bundle. I'll clean up the look later on when it's time to put them back on the body. For now, I just want to make sure that I've got all the connections taken care of. But it's looking a lot better overall. You know... That's still more than I need on that connection, so let's shorten it just a little bit. But I do want to leave enough to spin the jack around a little bit if I need to. Yeah. Yep. That's a lot better. Yeah, I might still spin that around a little bit, but right now... That's all I need. Ah, but we've still got the pickups to contend with. Now, you'll remember from the first episode, we discovered that the original bridge pickup has been rewound and rather poorly. It is woefully underpowered for the task of being a bridge pickup, but Kyle was able to track down an original that's much louder and much hotter uh, that has some funny business going on with the wires. So I need to flip these wiring connections before I can install them. So let's get on it. Now you want to be extremely careful when you are working on these wires from the pickup terminals because this is where the pickup wires connect. And if you're not careful, you can pull them out as well. And that's the last thing we want to do. Get a little bit of black wax on your hand there. Yep, these wires are not secured very well at all. And same for this one. Now we flip it over. This is ground. Be extremely careful. I get why they did this. They did it weird. Let's just put some new wire on that. Fresh wire for everybody. Now before I put wire on that, I'm just going to double check and make sure I still get a reading from the pickup in case I need to reattach the wires coming from the coil. Yep. 8.3. Sometimes a pickup will read slightly hotter when you heat up the joints and reflow the solder. Uh, that happens naturally. Um, I think this was reading 8.2 in the first video. I'm not entirely certain. However, we are good to go. There's the original neck. That was black. Just going to reattach. This guy doesn't have very far to go for a ground connection, so I'm going to cut it right about there. Let's see if I can't. I'm sure that's not being picked up on camera, but this wire from the coil is just not wrapped nicely at all. If I can, I'd really like it secured in the wax before I start heating it up again. And we'll see what happens. Pickups might end up being out of phase, which I will test shortly. And if that's the case, I'll just flip the wires again. But that's how it was, so that's how I'm doing it. I'm just gonna... Run you right there. I'll give you a little more slack, why not? Just in case I need to pull it out later. up running to its terminal. 
And we're going to do the same with the ground. As I said, I know these terminals are flipped, but I will mess around with that once I test them. I may have to flip the wires. I probably will. I'm expecting to because they're backward, or they were backward. Let's double check. We're still getting a reading. 8.3 in the circuit. And that means we can go ahead and reattach the original neck, which I'm going to run. Instead of running it to the shield like original Jazz Masters usually do, I like to run them to a component if I possibly can, because that is always a much safer ground connection. Much more secure. I'm just going to run it directly to the switch. So yeah, that's one place where I differ from original Fender production practices. I'm allowed. You know. Let's cut that ratty end off. The condition of these wires leaves a little to be desired. I think I'm going to stick with my beer idea, that everything is dirty because a beer was spilled onto and into the guitar. All right, that should wrap it up for the guard. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to plug it into an amp and test our connections, make sure we've got a strong signal from both pickups and that the pickups are in phase. All right, I've got everything rigged up to test. First, I'm gonna make sure that I've got a proper ground connection between my components using my multimeter. This is the one that I used before in another video where I wanted to make sure that things were connected. So it's gonna beep and tell me when parts are properly secured on the aluminum shield. Perfect, 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 yep, and yep. Now, if you look at the bridge pickup, you'll notice that I did indeed have to flip the wires. Uh, they were out of phase when I went to test off camera, so we took care of that. Oh man, these pickups are loud and authoritative and I'm so excited to string this guitar up at some point. For the moment, I'm going to plug into the satellite behind me. We're just gonna do a little tap testing on the pole pieces, make sure we've got loud, healthy output. Now bear in mind, this is gonna be noisy. It's not in a guitar now, so there's no ground connection. There's no shielding around it. This is just bare open coils, baby. So let's see what we've got. Just a little tap testing. Let's test the bridge pickup first. Yep, nice and loud. Neck. Yep, nice and loud. And middle. And see, when I do that, the hum goes away. It's uh, actually facing the electrical component of this workbench, so it's going to be noisy. And lastly, let's check the rhythm circuit. Yep, neck pickup only. Tone. Volume works. Tone works. Back to the lead circuit, volume and tone. Yep. And tone. Yep. We have got a perfectly working pick guard. And that was one last test I want to do. This is my 51 Fender lap steel. This is one of my favorite instruments that I own. And I keep it around not only because I love playing lap steel, but I keep it around to test pickups like this. So we've got controls up the whole way, and I just hold the pickups close to the strings. Yep, makes a nice sound, I think. This is gonna work out great, and I am so excited to pop this back in the guitar body. Will I do that now? Not yet. I've got to put the shields back in, I've got to get the thimbles reinstalled and the vibrato reinstalled. I've got a little bit of work, so I'm going to save that for later. But as of right now, we've got ourselves a beautiful, a functional, a much cleaner wiring harness overall. I'm going to keep working with some of the wires here. I just wanted to make sure everything worked before I messed with it. But I think that is enough for a part. Friends, thank you so much for joining me as I restore this guitar and get it back in a fighting shape. I am so excited to move on to fretwork in the next episode. Well, 
neck prep at least. We've got to take care of that rosewood fretboard with the uh, uneven radius issue. So next part, fretboard prep. It's going to be a doozy. But in any case, I have been your old pal, Mike. Thank you so much for watching and for coming back to the channel again and again, for liking, for sharing, for commenting, for subscribing, for doing all the things that let me know that I'm on the right track. Thank you so much. And double thank you if you support me on Patreon, if you've given me a tip on coffee. I appreciate it more than you can possibly imagine and more than I have the words to express. Well, I'm going to go take a break, kick back, have a nice adult beverage and celebrate my success with this pick guard. In any case, I hope that you're well. I hope that you're taking care of yourselves and each other and we'll see you in the next video.